Hello, everybody. I'm Zias Caraval, Principal Analyst with ZK Research, and I'm also the host of uh, this eWeek eSpeaks. And I'm delighted to be here with uh, a person I've known for a while, Nabil Bukhari, who's the Chief Technical Officer and the Chief Product Officer of Extreme Networks. Nabil, uh, why don't you say hi to everybody? Hey, Zias. Thank you for having me here. I really appreciate that. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's it, good to hear. And yeah, oddly enough, to to you. <laughs> uh, oddly enough, I happened to be in Toronto this week, with, you know, on my way to visit family and found out Nabil's in Toronto. So small <laughs> world after all. And, uh, you know, we're global, but we're really small. Uh, now, Nabil, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about Extreme Networks? Uh, most people don't know this, but Extreme actually is a near a billion dollar company and the largest enterprise pure play. And that, that may come as a surprise to some people. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's, it's just, I mean, the company has been around for a little while. I think uh, starting next year, this is our 25th anniversary. And you would typically expect that a company that is like 25 year old in technology is probably going to be like old and doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but Extreme is very different. You know, we have throughout our history, we have been kind of at the cutting edge. We have been challenging the status quo. Um, we've been trying to do new things. And we are always looking for how can we reduce complexity in the environments that we function in, which is networking right now. And in this iteration of Extreme, that is what we're all about. And you're absolutely right. We're about a billion dollar. Um, we are one of the big players, pure play on the networking side, one of the fastest growing cloud, um, second largest cloud. So a lot of different things. Uh, so pretty, pretty important player in this industry, if I could say that myself. Right. Yeah, you've, you've had a big role. Uh, I mean, I know, I know Extreme's gone through a lot of growth through different M&A, so putting those platforms together when it's easy. Uh, one of the more interesting acquisitions, I thought, was the acquisition of uh, one of your smaller acquisitions, a company called Arrowhive Networks, who most people who knew Arrowhive knew them as a cloud Wi-Fi company. Uh, in fact, they were the pioneer in cloud management. And I find the cloud and net networking kind of an interesting juxtaposition because if you look historically you know, over the last 10 years in IT, everything's moved to the cloud and networking's really been slow to catch on, catch on to that trend. And Arrowhive came along and they allowed you to manage your infrastructure to the cloud. But I know from an extreme perspective, the vision of cloud and networking is broader than just management, correct? And so, so explain how the cloud fits into networking and, and how it extends past just that simple cloud management that, that a lot of companies have today. Yeah, and yes, that's the, you know that's something that you and I talk quite a bit about. Um, look, when we acquired Arrowhive, you're absolutely right. Arrowhive was known for cloud-driven or cloud-managed Wi-Fi. But look, when we acquired it, we didn't really have that cloud-managed Wi-Fi in mind. We had a much bigger picture in our in our mind because we believe that um, cloud is not just you know it's centralized, it's great, it's all about like centralized management and all that kind of stuff. But everybody knows that. But one of the reasons why we really wanted to invest in these cloud technologies is because of data. Because I really believe that today, data is the currency of this economy and more so in this post-pandemic world, hopefully when we get there, data is going to be the key to the insights that will drive your business. And we wanted to spend and we wanted to create this, this architecture, this framework, this cloud architecture that allows you to not only gain your data, gather your data, analyze your data, but then do something interesting with that. And when you think about data, it's not just having the data, it's about how durable your data is. Like for example, if you collect all of that data, would there be any changes that'll happen to it? And you know, like we talk about six, nine, seven, nines, I'm like cloud at this point in time is like 12 nines, which I can't even say what the number is, it's so crazy. Um, and then it's about duration. So a lot of the times, especially when you are gathering this data for analytics, you're doing it on-prem, most of the times, well, I retain it for 30 days or I retain it for seven days. And you know, you hit the limit of your storage locally, but with cloud, that is unlimited. And that's why we are the first networking company that said your data duration is unlimited. So your mm -hmm. data is in the cloud and it's there for as long as you're in the cloud, 10 years, five years, 50 years, hopefully, <laughs> right? And, and the ability for that is, now we believe that data today, we might not know what we can get and we can do with it. But as you go forward and as businesses start to transform, you can go back and glean some really, really interesting stuff from that data. And then of course, you gotta keep it secure. So all sorts of ISO certifications that are for our cloud globally. So that has been kind of like the core tenant of our cloud investment. So we wanna take it just we, we want to take it beyond just managing. 
the network, right? Yeah, in fact, I like to focus on data because I, I wrote this and I can't remember, one of the, I think Forbes or one of the places I write where, you know, we used to say that every company is a technology company, but that's really table stakes today. And I think competitive differentiation comes from data and your ability to find those unique insights on it. So the more data you have, the better. Of course, it has to be in a format that's usable, right? So uh, now I know on the, on the networking side, um, uh, there's a lot of customers that I've talked to that, that they, they complain a lot about the inflexibility of network gear. Uh, you tend to get locked into a platform. And then if you want to upgrade, you got to make a decision, rip and replace everything or stick with this, this other line that maybe isn't you know, doing the right thing for you. And Extreme recently made an announcement called Universal Platform, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what Universal Platform is and how it helps break that lock on inflexibility. Absolutely, yes, and, and, I, and I remember when you wrote about that. Look, the idea here is that networking, people still think about networking in silos. Oh, I'm deploying a data center. So automatically they assume that they need a certain set of technologies that are only relevant for data center perhaps 10 years ago, but not any longer, or people are thinking about campus or people are thinking about edge or people are thinking of branch. But the idea is that as we move forward, I actually believe that these silos are breaking down and the pandemic is only accelerating. it. There is the enterprise network that goes everywhere and does everything rather than a data center and a campus and a branch and an edge. And therefore, Vendors like us need to and must produce technologies that very seamlessly move around and can be reused. Um, I know they're not doing that, but that is something that customers has to look at because after this pandemic, as people start thinking about what is the new normal, what is the new reality plus pandemic, they're gonna have to invest in technologies that are not only meant for one portion of the network, but are actually relevant to the entire enterprise. Now, we started doing that, obviously, you talked about cloud, so cloud is a big thing that is relevant end-to-end. For us, everything that we do connects to the cloud, so that brings in that flexibility. Then we brought it into the licensing part. We said single license on cloud that goes to any kind of device anywhere in your network. And then we said, why stop towards at the cloud? Why not bring it to the infrastructure as well? So universal platforms that we recently launched, they are essentially... Um, single hardware that can be utilized in any of the use cases, starting from the data center all the way to the edge, because the same hardware with the same license can run any of the OSs that we have. And that is true both on the switching as well as the wireless side. So now you have this physical hardware that you can move. You know, we, we see that all the time, enterprise use something in their core and like three years later, they want to move it somewhere else as they upgrade it there. But when they're going to move somewhere else, well, guess what? It doesn't have the features that are required in Edge. But with the universal hardware, you change the OS on it, same licensing, same cost, same cloud, and now automatically using the same stuff that was perhaps in the core, now at the Edge, bringing in flexibility and really reducing the total cost of ownership and extending the lifespan of this investment. I believe that post pandemic, this flexibility is going to be the key decision factor for most of the companies out there. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. And uh, I think the one thing the pandemic taught us is they have to be prepared for anything because nobody saw this coming, right? There's not one person that could claim they saw this coming, except maybe Bill Gates. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, um, and I think the lesson for businesses is that you have to be agile, but you're only as agile as IT lets you be. Yep. And so while I think most of the network vendors have done a good job of creating software agility, I believe Extreme is the only one, correct me if I'm wrong, that is actually agility at the hardware layer, which is, Absolutely. yeah, which I didn't actually think was possible. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, and I guess that's just the way equipment has historically been built, purpose built like that. So Absolutely. And then, then what happens is that typically, uh, you know, think about it. It was in the vendor's interest to say that, look, if you're buying a switch and if you're mind for this use case, buy it. And if you want to change the use case, well, I guess you have to buy another one, right? I mean, like it, it made sense from a vendor point of view. Uh, but look, extreme is different. We challenge these kind of notions. And we said, why? Technology at this point is at a place where we can build a piece of hardware that can be used in multiple different places. Why would we not do that? And why would not we not provide that flexibility to our customers? Uh, so we have that vision in mind. Uh, and look, now we have actually made it happen. 
in not only software, not only cloud, not only hardware, but the last part that is really critical is the consumption model, which is licensing. People might say like, oh, sure, you can reuse it, but go and buy all sorts of new licenses. And we didn't say that. We said, you've already bought the license one. And yes, you're using it for some capabilities on you know, use case A, the capabilities on use case B are different, but you've already paid for it. So the same license actually applies to both. So hardware, OS, cloud, and most importantly, the money part, which is the licensing part. Uh, well, thanks, Neil. So you gave us a good introduction into the importance of data and uh, universal platform. Now you are Extreme's chief technology officer and we are at the end of 2020. So I do like to get into a bit of predictions here. So put your uh, uh, Kreskin hat on for those of you who understand that reference and uh, give us a prediction for 2021. What should we be expecting? Um, you know, so this first thing is that, uh, as you said, nobody really knows. So everybody has their own crystal ball. So just looking into my crystal ball, as I'm talking, to a lot of companies out there, businesses, all different kinds of businesses from making satellites to shoes and everything in the middle. What I'm seeing is that they are all grappling with the boundaries of enterprise because currently the enterprise is pretty bounded, well-defined. Here's my data center, here's my campus, here's my edge, and maybe I have like you know 50 branches. But what is happening now is that instead of having those 50 branches, you have 50,000 branches because every one of your user is a branch. And now the difference is that pre-pandemic, they were called remote users. So you gave them an experience that was equivalent to a remote user and you had to connect them back to the enterprise. But when you really look after the pandemic, the enterprise has to go to these users. They're not going to be remote users. They're going to be users. And you will have to figure out how to expand your enterprise to reach each one of them. I like to call it the start of the infinite enterprise. Um, and it's infinitely distributed it's everywhere. And look, our branches, you know, when they're buildings, they are stationary. You know where they exist. But if users are your branches, they move all over the place. So it's going to be a lot of movement, very dynamic and very infinitely distributed enterprise. And I believe that enterprises are gonna to have to rethink the way they design and deploy their infrastructure and their cloud to manage that. So that I think is definitely happening and I think it'll only accelerate. Yikes, well, that's a pretty daunting thought, the, uh, the infinite enterprise. So yeah, I think most companies have trouble just uh, scaling their networks to the fixed number of branches they have. But I, I do think you're right. I do think we're rapidly approaching that. If you start throwing in IoT devices, then it becomes uh, infinity plus one, I guess, or whatever yeah. you want to call that. So absolutely, I mean, think about it this way: we're already seeing that you know, if your hospitals, you need to get to the patients wherever they are. If your schools, who thought that schools will have to figure out? Elementary school will have to figure out how to you know get education to these young students in their home, not just when they're sick or not getting to school, but in a in a regular way. Offices, um, state and local governments. I mean, like, pick whichever business you want to look at, and this is what is happening. And I know it's very daunting, but the one thing that I say, if you choose cloud to bring you that, give you that view that you can have a system that is very distributed and pick technologies that are flexible, I think businesses will figure this out as they go. So those are the two key tenants here. Okay, well, um, I looked at the clock and I think we're almost out of time, but thank you very much, Nabil. The infinite enterprise coming to a business near you and of course, network agility there is the key. So on behalf of Neil Bukhari, CTO and CPO of Extreme Networks, I'm Zias Caravella uh, from ZK Research and also we can have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.